Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to part 8 in the restoration series of this uh, Saba Meersberg 100. This is still not the final one. I've been away for a while, so I've had less time to work on the, on the project, but it's coming along. And it's coming along at the rate of... Um, at the rate that it takes paint to dry. If you've ever done a cabinet like this, where you strip it down to the wood and you uh, give it the colour and then you give it lacquer, you'll understand what I mean. Lacquer takes a long time to dry. So this thing is still nearly there, but not quite. And I decided I needed Bluetooth. This thing needs Bluetooth. The speakers this thing's got needs Bluetooth. And I would be committing an absolute crime if I didn't uh, give Bluetooth to this thing. So this is what this video is about. I'm adding Bluetooth using one of those boards that I've designed previously and, uh, and shown you all. And I want to take you through the procedure because there's a very interesting little uh, trick on how to switch on Bluetooth in this radio. This radio was made to have switched something, and in this case, Bluetooth, when you push the photo button. So if this sort of thing piques your interest, stick around, enjoy the video. But before I carry on, I just want to thank the sponsors of this video, PCB Way. You'll find them at PCBWay.com. They're the people I use for all the PC boards that I make on the channel. Incredible price, really fast turnaround time. And besides PCB, they've got an enormous amount of other services. CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal, injection molding, whatever you need, they've got. And uh, they're actually running a promotion right now on uh, PCB assembly services, which means you can get your project really one step further, either turnkey using the PCB Way supply parts or a customer supply parts, or you can have a combo of that as well. And they'll describe to you how it works. It's very, very simple. You'll get a full quote on your project by setting the required parameters, describing to them exactly what options you want on, uh, on the boards, add a PCB order to the order itself, and then you push calculate and it'll give you the final result. This is obviously just a sample to show you how it works. So if you have a project in mind and you want somebody else to do the, the carrying, go ahead, check them out and get your assembly done with PCB Way. Let's carry on now. I'm sure you'll agree with me that uh, with speakers like this thing's got, you definitely need Bluetooth. And I'm adding one of my Bluetooth modules on the board that I've designed. I won't go into too much detail on this because I've done a video on it and I'll link to it above. You can have a look at that. And in fact, the boards have been slightly improved. So on the share link on PCB Way, if you want to order them, they've been improved somewhat. It's got to do mostly with the sizes for some of the holes that were a little bit too small on here. But anyway, I built up the board. This thing's got uh, an op-amp on here that gives it a 2, well, 3.3 times boost. As you may know, the signal from these little modules is just slightly too low for the phono input on the back here, and the volume then doesn't match. If you're listening to radio and put uh, Bluetooth, you have to up the volume. So this is the uh, Bluetooth module board and I've got the respective wires on here. Now, what have I got on here? Well, it says here stereo output. This thing has only got mono, so effectively these two bands or channels that come out of here get amplified. They go onto there and they become one. So we've got a single link on there, left and right. You can do that on here because there are resistors prior to that, 1K resistors that allow you to make the stereo signal mono without shorting the the outputs of the op amps. The decoupling or coupling, the capacitor coupling is uh, done with these little, uh, these are Panasonic one microfarad capacitors. You can use whatever sort you want. I like these because they fit nicely. I'm actually running out of them. Got to get some more. And so our signal comes through that wire and it comes out here. The signal and ground. Okay, that's what we need to worry about. Now there's one thing that's very important on here and that is the 6.3 volts that comes in here doesn't actually have ground. Yeah, let me explain that. The 6.3 volts comes in here and it is actually polarized. I mean, this sounds crazy, but you've got to get the zero volts, which is the chassis, and the 6.3 volts AC correct on here. The reason for that is that when you start, when you actually use this 6.3 volts to create a dual supply down here, and I described that in the video that I've done on this, you are using a reference to ground. And the ground is actually achieved through this ground here. Okay? So, in order to not short the grounds, you've got to get that right. So, what we're left with is two wires. One of them is the audio cable, this one here. And this one here is for the AC 
the 6.3 volts heater supply. The 6.3 volts goes here and this goes to ground. Now why have I got this like this? Well, you could literally connect this to any point where 6.3 volts is available, but that means that as soon as you turn on the radio, this thing is on. And this does make some noise. This is digital. It makes digital noise. So if you're listening to FM or AM, but usually FM, you will hear some sort of buzz if this thing is on and it's not connected uh, to be used as the Bluetooth receiver. So I want this Bluetooth receiver module to only come on when the phono is selected. So I need to switch this. And I've done this before with all sorts of funny switches. I normally put this straight to 6.3 volts anywhere I can find it. Uh, sometimes it's a dial lamp, sometimes it's one of the heater supplies on the tubes. And this one I sometimes use a switch that um, somehow when you push the phono it clicks it and connects this to ground. Well, in this particular radio we've got a bonus system. We've got these magic little lights which has an incorporated switch. Now what is this? Well, these lights, these little lights are actually on the underside of the, the uh, piano keys. When you select um, long wave, medium wave, short wave and FM, that lights up. And what it does is it actually, the, the, um, the switch or rather the, the arm of the piano key comes up. How can I describe this? I'll try and show you on site there, but I'll describe it like this. You've got Let's see if I can do that. Okay, you've got the, the arm of the piano key. The piano key is down here and this thing's on top here. And when you push it, it comes up and it pushes into that, that contact there, which is sprung. And that makes ground because this is all grounded. So that connects it to ground and that gives you your ground to the 6.3 volts AC from the heater supply that's coming onto here. So your lamp is getting 6.3 volts AC this is actually sort of reversed. This is the 6.3 volts that's coming from here. And that then becomes your ground over there. And you can use the exact same thing to switch this on. Now, what I'm going to do is actually connect both of these. I'm going to connect this to here. That's my 6.3 volts AC. And I'm going to connect this to there. That's my ground. So when the button is pushed, this light will come on and 6.3 volts AC will go to my module and power it all up. I think, I hope that all works. Now, what I've noticed on this radio is that all the buttons have one of these with the exception of the, um, of the phono, the mono switch, they call it phono mono. And so I found one of these on a, um, another chassis that I've got, that I've used. I bought it as a donor chassis. There were a lot of things missing, but it's got these little lamps. These lamps are, difficult to find as it is. So I've got some spares if some of those guys burn out. But I'm going to add this to the phono so that this will actually light up as well. If you are going to get really uh, adventurous, you could paint this blue. Actually, I might do that. I don't know if I've got blue paint. The idea is that when you push that phono, the uh, phono, it'll come on blue and blue is Bluetooth, right? I've just had that idea. Sometimes I get these ideas when I'm talking. So I talk a lot, try and get some more ideas, but I might do that. That might look uh, actually quite nice. I don't know what way I'm going to find blue paint that doesn't chip off when it uh, gets hot, but I'll think of something. So I'm going to put this in place. I'm going to connect this on there and let me show you where it goes. You can see where these guys are. That will be FM, uh, shortwave, medium, long wave, one of those. And this guy here has got nothing on there. You can't really see this because that's in the way, but believe me, there's nothing on there. So that's where I'm going to put this little guy on there. And that will work to light up when I push uh, phono. But before I do that, I'm going to actually solder. I need to solder this on here. And then that will be tied in with a screw as I screw this down. I'll do that. I'm not going to show you. This thing is underneath. It's pretty difficult and... Um, it's going to be a bit of a, an exercise to get this done underneath this. I don't want to remove that, but let me get that done. All right, it's done. It's in place. That uh, positive goes to the uh, screw there. It's bent here so that it doesn't interfere with that plate. The wires come out here, so we've got uh, plus six volts and a ground that is switched with that um, phono selector. 
There's a little zip tie on here. There's a convenient hole on the chassis there. This is going to the back. I'll show you that in a second. But let me show you that this works. I'm going to switch on the radio now. I've just switched on the supply. As you can see, it's on uh, long wave. If I push the others, medium wave, that lights up. Short wave, FM. And now we've got the phono lights up. And what's happening on the uh, Bluetooth module, as you can probably see, the Bluetooth module is now switched on. It's seeking. And if I put it onto medium wave again, watch that little blue light, it disappears. I push it on uh, phono again, And there's our Bluetooth looking for a connection. Okay, let's carry on. Now the next stage of the operation is to connect this to the back here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this wire, this is the supply wire, the 6.3 volt supply wire, come along here. And I'm going to connect, I'm actually going to connect the audio to those two over there. This is the external phono plug. There is ground, there's the phono in. I'm not going to use those two. So I'm going to connect this like that, okay? But before I do that, I want to make sure this thing stays in place. So I'm going to shorten this and I'm going to probably zip tie it to that leg or that leg and make sure it all stays nice and neat at the back there. I'll get right back when I've done that. So there we are. I've got the signal going to the signal. Actually, good thing I looked. I forgot to solder this. I'll just solder that to here. The ground is there. It's zip tied to that leg just to keep it a little bit more sturdy. This is supposed to look like it can be easily removed and it can. So I'm not trying to, you know, thread it through the bottom or anything like that. This will be on the bottom of the radio and then it'll go through a hole on that side and out the side where the uh, Bluetooth module is going to be fitted against the, well, on the panel that holds the uh, side speaker, one of the side speakers. Okay, that bar the final soldering means the Bluetooth has been connected. This is bloody amazing. I've got the Bluetooth on. I've been listening to some Power Blues by Buddha, Buddha Gedge. That's a friend of mine from Braga, Portugal. Great musician. And the sound is astounding. I've connected this temporarily, obviously. I've got to get it out of the, uh, the whole, the whole um, bracket and um, and put it in there and I'll also be showing you a little bit more detail on what I've done to the well actually <laughs> I haven't shown you anything yet of what I've done to the cabinet but I wanted to hear it on the actual speakers so I uh, decided to connect it via that plug which means that I'm getting the full speaker experience on this uh, on this radio and the sound is astounding and it's actually going to get better because when you finally put it in the cabinet and you close it in. It's got the whole resonance thing going on. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'm just sorry I can't uh, really play much because of copyright issues. But hey, I'm really chuffed so far. I'm really getting uh, quite anxious to get this whole thing set up and do the final testing. I want to give you a sense of what this thing really sounds like. I've got some royalty free music I want to play on here. It's not the ideal, but it's going to have to do. I've connected the speakers in there, the cabinet and incomplete as is, but um, is ready to play through the uh, the actual speakers. I'm going to put this, connect this up, put this on, and I'll put the microphone by on the other side of the cabinet so you can hear what it sounds like. So let's get started. I've got, uh, let's put that on. I'll put it on phono. I've got a phone here that I can use as the interface. There it is. I've connected that. Now let's put some music. I'm going to shift the microphone to the other side so you can get an idea of what it really sounds like. Thank you. 